हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इन दिस क्लास वी डिस्कस अबाउट रेडिकल एक्सिस व्हाट इज मेंट बाय रेडिकल एक्सिस रेडिकल एक्सिस ऑफ एनी टू सर्कल्स लेट अस कंसीडर सर्कल एस वन इज इक्वल टू जीरो एस वन इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड अदर सर्कल एस टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो दीज आर टू सर्कल्स सपोज द इक्वेशन ऑफ द फर्स्ट सर्कल इज एक्स स्क्वेर प्लस वाई स्क्वेर प्लस टू जी वन एक्स प्लस टू एफ वन वाई प्लस सी वन इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड एस टू सर्कल दिस इज एस वन सर्कल एंड इक्वेशन ऑफ द सर्कल एस टू इज इक्वल टू एक्स स्क्वेर प्लस वाई स्क्वेर प्लस टू जी टू एक्स प्लस टू एफ टू वाई प्लस सी टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो दीज आर टू सर्कल्स सपोज इफ यू कंसिडर दीज टू सर्कल्स दिस इज एस वन सर्कल दिस इज एस टू सर्कल्स एस वन इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड एस टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो आर टू सर्कल्स देन द रेडिकल एक्सिस इज द लॉकस ऑफ अ पॉइंट फ्रॉम विच द पवर्स फ्रॉम विच द पवर्स ऑफ टू सर्कल्स विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू द पवर्स ऑफ टू सर्कल्स फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट आर इक्वल द लॉकस ऑफ ए पॉइंट पी बी ए लॉकस ए पॉइंट इन द लॉकस पी सैटिस्फाइज द कंडीशन दैट द पवर ऑफ पी विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एस वन इज ईक्वल टू पवर ऑफ पी विथ रेस्पेक्ट एस टू दैट इज नथिंग बट एस वन वन इज ईक्वल टू एस टू टू दैट मीन्स दिस पॉइंट इज टू बी सब्सटिट्यूटेड इन एस टू इफ यू आर सब्सटिट्यूटिंग वी गेट एस टू वन or directly suppose if you are considering it is s1 circle it is s dash is circle then s11 is equal to s dash 11 we can also write in this manner so means what is s11 s11 is nothing but s11 is nothing but s11 is equal to s dash 11 which implies by substituting suppose this point is p h comma k is the point in the locus then we write yes h square plus k square instead of x comma y you replace by h and k to get s11 h square plus 2 g1 h plus 2 f1 y f1 k plus c1 is equal to h square plus for s s dash 11 h square plus k square plus 2 g1 h plus 2 f1 k f2 sorry F two, k plus c two. This is the condition. From this condition, what can you write? H square h square cancel. So the two g one x two f one k two g two h two f two k plus c one and c two. So by collecting all the terms aside, then we are getting two h of two h of g one minus g two plus two k of F one minus F two plus C one minus C two is equal to zero. This is nothing but the locus. Means to get the locus H comma K should be replaceable in terms of X comma Y. That is, we are getting we are getting two X into G one minus G two plus two Y into F one minus F two. Plus C one minus C two is equal to zero. If you see closely, it is a linear in x and y. It is a linear equation in x comma y. X comma y. What about linear equation represents? It is a straight line. It is a straight line. So the locus of P E represents. A straight line, so it is a radical axis. Moreover, if you are talking about the radical axis, if you join, suppose these two are given circles, these two are given circle. This is a center C one. Let us say it is center C two. If you are considering these two circles, the radical axis is a straight line in this manner. So the locus of all such points. Lying on a circle belongs to a line. Suppose if it is 
radical axis if you see closely the line given line given circle equations given circle equations if you see by collecting all the terms s1 is equal to s11 is equal to s12 we are writing so that by simplifying anyhow we are getting an equation in terms of by cancelling the x square and y square terms are cancelled and g1 term we got in the radical axis g2 term is also got in the radical axis f1 and f2 c1 and c2 all of them cancel all of them comes in the radical line equation which is nothing but by simplifying you are getting s1 minus s2 is equal to 0 by subtracting one circle equation from the other circle equation we get a radical axis equation so whenever two circles are given s1 and s2 the radical axis is nothing but the difference of the two circles whenever the coefficient of x1 and x square coefficient and y square coefficient should be 1 means that should be in the general form x square a x square plus b y square a should be 1 here in the same case s2 has x square coefficient and y square coefficient should be equal to 1 so by from changing into general form we get the radical axis equation next <coughs> So, in this uh, equation, in this uh, concept, uh, let us uh, learn some important points. The first point is radical axis is a straight line. Radical axis is a straight line and its equation is equation of radical axis is equation of radical axis is S1 minus S2 is equal to 0. The first point and the second point is Radical axis is perpendicular to the line joining the centers. Suppose if you see this is line joining the centers. Radical axis always perpendicular to the line joining the centers. Suppose if it is the circle uh, first circle S1, its center is minus G1 comma minus F1. It is the center. For the second circle, the center is minus G2 comma minus F2 is the center. Suppose if this is center, then the slope of slope of c1 c2 is equal to minus f2 minus of minus f1 by minus g2 minus of minus g1 plus g1 this is nothing but f1 minus f2 by f1 minus f2 by g1 minus g2 this is the slope of c1 c2 now slope of radical axis is slope of radical axis is equal to minus x question by y question that is minus 2 times of as it is the equation is radical axis equation is this one minus x question by y question that is we are getting minus 2 times of g1 minus g2 g1 minus g2 by 2 into f1 minus f2 2 to cancel we are getting minus of g1 minus g2 by f1 minus f2 so slope of this let us say this is slope m1 this is slope m2 so m1 into m2 is equal to m1 into m2 is equal to minus 1 which means f1 minus f2 by g1 minus g2 into minus of g1 minus g2 by f1 minus f2 which is nothing but the product we are getting minus 1 product of the slopes equal to minus 1 so that m1 into m2 is equal to minus 1 so that it is a m1 into m2 is equal to minus 1 therefore the radical axis always perpendicular to the line of centers see the next point the third point is the radical axis first first and second parts so we discussed the third point is the radical axis s11 is equal to s22 suppose uh, this is uh, these are two circles suppose these two are circles s1 is equal to 0 s uh, sorry s is equal to 0 and it is s dash is equal to 0 suppose these two are circles uh, then if p belongs to the radical axis p h comma k belongs to the radical axis then simply we can write s11 is equal to s dash 11 that is a radical axis condition suppose if whenever the radical axis 
exists. Then if a point, if the radical axis is outside the two circles, when the radical axis is exterior of the two circles, it do not intersects, then root over S11 is equal to root over S-11. S dash 11, S11 is nothing but the length of the tangents. So, whenever the radical axis outside the circle, then we can apply square root for both the circles. As we are, as the radical axis is not intersecting the circle, then it is positive, S dash 11 is also positive. In that case, we can apply directly square root. Whenever the square root is applied, it is nothing but length of the tangent. Length of tangent length of tangent for the first circle s1 is equal to 0 s is equal to 0 is equal to length of tangent length of tangent for the second circle s dash is equal to 0 s is equal to 0 is a circle s dash is equal to 0 circle from the point from any point on the radical axis the lengths of the tangent drawn to the two circles are always equal whatever the point we are taking suppose if you take this point q on the radical axis, then the lengths of the tangents from this radical axis to the two circles are equal. That the condition is the radical axis do not intersect any of the two circles. That is one important. Suppose in our note point we are discussing. Next point is suppose two circles intersecting each other. Suppose two circles intersecting each other s is equal to 0 and s dash is equal to 0 in that case the common chord will be their radical axis the common chord will be their radical axis suppose if you if common chord is a and b if the chord extended then it becomes a radical axis so because it satisfies the condition whatever the point you are taking on this line the tangents are drawn from this point from this any point on the radical axis to two circles are always equal in this case the radical axis when two circles intersect each other when two circles intersect each other intersect each other each other then radical axis is equal to then radical radical axis is equation of equation of common tangent common tangent of two circles common tangent of two circles common tangent of s is equal to 0 and s dash is equal to 0 this is another condition next suppose next point we discuss if the two circles are touch each other if two circles are touch each other if two circles touch each other touch each other then the common tangent is the common tangent common tangent is their radical axis the common tangent is their radical axis their radical axis ok so that means uh, there exists uh, two cases suppose it is one circle and it is other circle whenever these two are touch each other at point P one is inside the other circle then the common tangent will be the radical axis suppose if the two circles are touch each other externally in that case also the radical axis is their common tangent it is a radical axis and at the same time it is common tangent it is a radical axis in this case common tangent whenever the two circles intersect each other then the common chord is a radical axis whenever two circles touch each other then the common chord the common tangent is radical axis another condition is note number six sixth point is the radical axis is 
द रेडिकल एक्सिस द रेडिकल एक्सिस एग्जिस्ट द रेडिकल एक्सिस रेडिकल एक्सिस रेडिकल एक्सिस एग्जिस एग्जिस फॉर ऑल सर्कल्स फॉर ऑल सर्कल्स फॉर ऑल सर्कल्स एक्सेप्ट कॉन्सेंट्रिक सर्कल्स एक्सेप्ट एक्सेप्ट कॉन्सेंट्रिक सर्कल्स इन दैट केस रेडिकल एक्सिस डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट because all the terms will be cancelled we get an absurd relation in that case concentric except concentric circles concentric circles concentric circles so this is one other point suppose these two circles are concentric what is the difference in these two suppose what is the circle of first equation x square plus y square plus plus a two g x uh, plus a two f y plus c one is equal to zero. First circle. The other circle equation is only difference in constant remaining all same because the center is g comma f. Suppose minus g comma minus f is the center. The circles equations can be x square plus y square plus two g x plus टू एफ वै टू एफ वै प्लस सी टू इज इक्वल जीरो सो वेन एवर द कंडीशन इज अड देन वेन एवर द कंडीशन इज अड आल द टर्म्स विल बी कैंसल वी गेट सी वन इज इक्वल टू सी टू सी वन इज इक्वल टू जीरो इट इज अब रिलेशन थ्री इज इक्वल टू फोर इफ यू गेट इट इज एन अब रिलेशन इट नॉट एग्जिस्ट सो दट इन दट केस रेडिकल एक्सिस इट डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट पॉइंट नंबर सेवन The point is, suppose, suppose one circle contains, one circle is contained in other circle with the different centers. In that case, the radical axis will be exterior of the two circles. When one circle is contained in the other circle, the radical axis of two circles exists, but it should be exterior of the circle. How can you say that? that is exterior of the circle because if you are taking any point on the line suppose p is a point yes the definition says the power of the point from the radical axis or the length of the tangent both are edges suppose if you consider the power of the point for the first circle is positive power of the point suppose if it is circle s1 uh, is equal to 0 it is s dash is equal to 0 suppose the power of the point for the first circle is s11 and the power of the circle second circle is s dash 11 so for the power of the uh, for um, power of the first circle is positive it is greater than 0 it is positive power of the second circle is if it is outside then it will be positive so in that case both of them are equal suppose if the line exists in this manner suppose if the line exists in this manner If the line exists in this manner, radical axis in this manner. So for this point, for this particular point, this is uh, the power of the point for the second circle is s uh, dash is equal to zero. The power of the point is positive because the point Q is exterior of the circle. The point Q is exterior of the circle, inner circle. But in the case of first circle, that is uh, negative because it is uh, the circle is exterior the point is inside the inside the second circle s is equal to 0 therefore in this case the power is negative for the first circle the power is positive so both are both of them should not be equal so as per the definition as per the definition the power should not be positive and negative so both should be the same sign therefore the radical axis always exterior of the circle understand if see here if one circle is contained in the other circle except a concentric circle then the radical axis will be exterior of the two circles means that do not intersect any of the circles this is another point next point point number 8 if we consider this point 
if you consider this point uh, if two circles are given this is circle s is equal to 0 this is circle s dash is equal to 0 these two circles suppose there is a common tangent a b is the common tangent for both circles if the radical axis is drawn for this circle the radical axis suppose the common tangent is bisected at point p suppose if it is common tangent a b is common tangent radical axis at intersect at p then what can you say about p a and p b p b p a exactly equal to p b in this case yes from any point on the radical axis the common the curves the tangents lengths are equal from any point on the radical axis their their tangents lengths are equal that implies p a is equal to p b in this case whenever p a is equal to p b then that point belongs to radical axis is it holds for only direct common tangent suppose if you consider transverse common tangent it is a transverse common tangent suppose the radical axis intersect at point q what can you say about this line this point suppose it is c if it is d what can you say about c q and q d it is also length of the tangent for the first circle it is also length of the uh, tangent for the second circle so in this case also c q is equal to c d c q is equal to sorry d q in this case also c q is equal to q d means the transverse common tangent also bisected by the radical axis as per the definition transverse common tangent also bisected by the radical axis so we can conclude that the radical axis radical axis radical axis of any two circles any two circles bisects bisects there bisects there bisects their common tangents common bisects their bisects their common tangents that is another important point next point point number 9 if you discuss about point number 9 before discussing about point 9 this point let us understand orthogonality orthogonal circles suppose if you see two circles are intersecting orthogonally suppose two circles are intersecting orthogonally a be the point of intersection and b be other point of intersection Yes, they are intersecting orthogonally. The tangent uh, or the tangent at point P, at point A of the first circle, let us say S, S is equal to 0, it is the first circle. The tangent S1 is equal to 0, otherwise, at the point of intersection for the first circle is this is the tangent. And the tangent for the second circle is this is the tangent a t1 let us say a t1 and it is a t2 suppose if you observe closely whenever the circles are orthogonal to each other then the angle between their tangents is 90 degrees the angle will be 90 degrees suppose for the tangent tangent for the circle second two for the tangent of a second circle is perpendicular to the radius of first circle that means this will be radius as the radius tangent of the second circle this is the tangent of at2 is the tangent of second circle at2 is the tangent of second circle 
this is tangent of second circle c2 circle or s2 circle s2 circle tangent is at2 this will be passing through the center of the first circle c1 understanding see the next point here suppose there are two circles s1 is equal to 0 and s2 is equal to 0 they are two circles if they are two circles a circle which intersects these two circles orthogonally there is a circle which intersects these two circles orthogonally then then what happens suppose uh, from any point it is a radical axis of first two circles it is a radical axis of first two circles s1 is equal to 0 and s2 is equal to 0 from any point on this line if you draw it is a p is a point then as it is perpendicular to the first circle and second circle the tangent of this the tangent drawn from p from a point p on the radical axis to any of the circles equal to its radius as it is orthogonal to two circles the radius is equal to length of the tangent to any of the two circles that is if it is intersecting first circle at a and the second circle at b then p a is equal to p b understanding from any point on the radical axis if you draw tangents to orthogonal circles then it will be its radius the orthogonal circle radius understand once again there are two circles second case in this case if they are not intersecting each other s1 is equal to 0 and s2 is equal to 0 suppose a radical axis exists it is the radical axis of the two circles if you take any point on the radical axis then if if there is a circle if there is a circle which intersects the two circles orthogonally if there is a circle which intersects the two circles orthogonally it is intersecting the circle first circle orthogonally it is intersecting the second circle orthogonally what we have discussed if a circle intersects other circle orthogonally then its radius is nothing but length of the tangent for the second circle the length of the tangent for the for the circle s1 is equal to 0 is equal to radius of the circle given circle whatever the circle it intersects that radius equal to length of the tangent from that point to the any of the circles this is other tangent as it is intersecting orthogonally suppose the radical axis the radical axis a point from a point on the radical axis as it is intersecting then the point will be center of the circle center of the orthogonal circle and it lies on the radical axis means we can also say this point as we can also say this point as a circle the center of the circle which intersects the two given circles orthogonally will lie always on a radical axis we can also say this point as if a circle intersects a two circle orthogonally if a circle given circle intersects other two circles orthogonally other suppose s1 is equal to 0 s1 s1 is equal to 0 s2 is equal to 0 they are two circles if a circle intersects these two circles s1 is equal to 0 and s2 is equal to 0 orthogonally then the center of the circle will lie on radical axis why means the radius of that circle the radius of the circle is equal to tangent from the point to the circle the radius of the circle is equal to tangent to the the radius of the circle equal to tangents to the each of the circles 
Therefore, in that case, the center of that circle, the point, the center of the circle will lie on the radical axis. Try to understand that point. A circle which intersects two circles orthogonally, the center of that circle lies on radical axis. That is the point. So, the point can be described as if a circle if a circle intersects intersects two circles orthogonally two circles orthogonally then the center of the circle center of the circle lies on radical axis r a represents a radical axis that is the point next point point number 10 suppose suppose s1 is equal to 0 and s2 is equal to 0 s3 is equal to 0 are three different circles suppose they are not intersecting each other if we can draw in this manner s1 is equal to 0 s2 is equal to 0 and s3 is equal to 0 suppose if you want to find out the radical axis of s1 is equal to 0 and s2 is equal to 0 that will be s1 minus s2 is equal to 0 that is radical axis s1 minus s2 is equal to 0 let us represent this uh, radical axis as R12. Suppose if you draw radical axis for the circles S2 is equal to 0 and S3 is equal to 0, that will be S23. It can be written as S2 minus S3 is equal to 0. This is the equation of radical axis, second radical axis. What about third radical axis? Third radical axis is S. Uh, S1 minus S3 is equal to 0 or S3 minus S1 is equal to 0. Let us represent uh, this radical axis R13 or R31, both are same. My intention is all the three radical axis are concurrent. My intention is to show all the radical axis are concurrent, means it is passing through the same point of intersection P. How can you represent concurrent lines? Suppose, suppose L1 is equal to 0 and L2 is equal to 0 are two lines. Then L1 plus lambda L2 is equal to 0 represents family of lines passing through the point of intersection of L1 and L2. That means suppose it is L1 is equal to 0, it is L2 is equal to 0. Suppose if they are intersecting at point P, then there exists number of lines of passing through this point of intersection. If for a lambda value, for a particular lambda value, L1 plus lambda L2 is equal to 0 represents a family of lines passing through the point of intersection. Means there exists infinitely many points. They are all represented by this line equation L1 plus lambda L2 is equal to 0. For particular lambda is equal to 1, a single line we get. For particular lambda is equal to minus 1, you get some other line. Suppose to get any line, particular line, for lambda is equal to 1, we get one line. For lambda is equal to minus 1, we get other line. For lambda is equal to 2, some other line. They are all formula of lines passing through this point. For particular lambda value, we get one line. My concept here, R12, R12 is equal to S1 minus S2 is equal to 0. R23 is equal to R23 is equal to S2 minus S3 is equal to 0. Suppose R12, R13. Suppose if you add these two, S2, S2 cancelled, we get S1 minus S3. It is nothing but suppose R12 plus R23, these two lines, it is L1, it is L2. L1 plus L2 is equal to S1 minus S2 plus S2 minus S3. 
nothing but S1 minus S3. S1 minus S3. It is equal to, it is equal to, what about this S1 minus S3? S1 minus S3 is nothing but R13. This is other line. We are getting other line. By joining these two lines, we are getting other line. That means R13 is a particular line. R13 is other line. It is combination of the given two lines R12 plus R12 plus 1 into R23 means L1 plus lambda into L2. L1 plus lambda L2 is equal to L3 other line. So, third line is written as sum of two lines the L1 plus lambda L2 form it is lambda R1 plus L1 plus lambda L2 is equal to some other line. So, third line can be written as written in the form of L1 plus lambda L2. Therefore, it passes through the point of intersection of R1 and R2. If it is R1 2 line, if it is R2 3 line, the point of intersection from this point of intersection we are getting some other line passing through this point. So, they are all concurrent that is my intention. Understanding? 